it's a mess. You've seen what's going on with the Terra ecosystem as well. I mean, yeah. they're actively selling Bitcoin. You know, I hear you know Jump in that whole equation is selling Ethereum. We've got it was just liquidation of everything, and it's interesting because it's spilling out into the macro world as well. Obviously, it's like stuff like oil, which was like the last thing that was holding up the inflation narrative, is starting to get properly clocked. I think. I mean, everybody, I think, in every position is about to lose money. There are early signs of the dust settling in the crypto market now that investors believe that the worst of the Terra or Luna collapse looks to be over. Viewing Bitcoin's chart indicates that while the fallout was widespread and quite devastating for altcoins, Bitcoin has actually held up fairly well. Even with the May 12th drop to $26,697 marking the lowest price level since 2020, multiple metrics suggest that the current levels could represent a good entry to Bitcoin. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, macro investor Raul Paul updates about the most recent things happening in the financial world, including high inflation, supply chain issues, volatility, and price trends of popular assets. He also addresses the most recent Terra Luna sellout, markets tightening, and why we're heading into a recession. Make sure to stick around till the end of this video where Raul Paul reveals the key reasons why everybody is going to lose money in the current times. So, without wasting any time, let's dive right into the video. It's part that and part the other issues, but I guess, you know, it, the equal and opposite was supply chains. There were, you know, we shut down everything and then everything comes back on stream. The best example I've got of this, a lot of people go back to the 1970s and say that it's this all over again. But the 1970s was very different because it was driven by demographics as well. You know, you had all of the baby boomers coming into the workforce all at the same time, and they bid up prices. This is actually more similar to coming out of World War II. So World War II, economic activity had shut down, except for the war effort. It comes on. World War II finishes. We start the great rebuilding. What happens is that prices exploded. Economic growth plunged. And then prices went negative. Economic growth ends, ends up stabilizing. Bond yields stayed stable between 1% and 3% for the next decade and a half. Economic growth was very strong because of technology and stimulus. And that feels like a similar situation. You know, we've got this massive rebuild of infrastructure. Supply chains need to come back to the to locally, so they have to build factories in the United States. Okay, they're robots. They're not going to hire people. But it's it's good for the economy. We've got this massive tech revolution going on. So we've got economic growth to come, I think, with relatively low inflation. But you're right, this is the equal and opposite effect of what we've just seen, which was the sharpest, fastest slowdown in history. We've now got the sharpest, fastest rise in history, and that will probably get unwound as well. So it's like dropping a rubber ball off the top of a building. Each one of these will get less, but I think we've got a few more of these cycles to get through. Raul Paul thinks the world is going through a recession period, but remains confident that cryptos will be a viable investment class in the long term. In a new interview, Real Vision CEO Raul Paul says that the Federal Reserve's recent decision to raise interest rates will further damage a reeling economy. Raul explains, My macro view is that we're in recession. It's going to be pretty nasty. The Fed shouldn't have done what they did, but the bond market tightened for them anyway. The Fed didn't actually do it. The bond market did it all. The Fed are going to have to unwind this mess, but it could get messy at first. Using all the technical indicators that I look at, my view is if we are going to reach a proper bounce or a low, it happens in June. So we've got between now and June for everyone to freak out. I think it's going to err towards, and I've always thought this, is nobody, no governments wants unregulated stablecoins. Right. They want central bank digital currencies, whether they're private sector or state sector. I think there'll be a blend. Nobody wants this. They, so they, they will use this as an excuse. And, you know, it's probably good for people like Paxos, and it's probably good for people like Circle, and it's not so good for Tether, and it's not so good for Terra. And, you know, the problem is, is if we are using, borrowing somebody else's currency, then we have to play their game, whether we like it or not. It's their currency. You know, so anybody thinks that, Oh, just because we've got some algorithm, it's not the Federal Reserve's currency. Smoking crack. 
I don't have an issue with stable coins. I mean, I think they're very useful because we need to integrate from our, you know, from the sovereign systems we live in to this digital Web3 world. And and that that's an integration tool and it works very well. So I have no issue with that. But the key point is, yeah, if you if you own Ethereum or Bitcoin or others, you own them. It's not somebody else's liability. It's not their asset. I mean, the dollar, it became absolutely clear to to the Russians that they thought they owned dollars as their own asset. They didn't. The US had lent it to them. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, you've you've got to realize what game you're playing here. And that's why, you know, I think the stablecoin industry as is is going to shift towards the highly regulated. And I I don't really have a problem with it. Sure, we're all utopians and we'd love this other world, but we also need to be pragmatists. If we want this world to win, we need to realize there's some battles we will fight and others that we can't win. Regarding the fate of cryptos within the broader economic turmoil, Paul suggests that leading smart contract platform Ethereum has held up relatively well in the face of inflation and the international sanctions fallout after Russia invaded Ukraine back in February. Raul said that, It's like a teenager, but let's face it, Ethereum's down like 40% this year and the Nasdaq's down 25%. It's not terrible, and Ethereum, for example, hasn't made a new low versus last year, while we've thrown inflation and rate hikes and wars and everything at it. I don't think we've gotten the massive blow off top. We've got a sort of blow off top, and I think we're in this very wide sloppy range. The macro investor is confident in Bitcoin and crypto's long-term prospects and cites inflation as the reason retail investors are not currently flocking to the space. The space is not going away. The central banks are building digital currency rails. Everybody's building everything. We're in this period where retail investors couldn't afford a dollar cost average anymore because their pocketbooks got hit by negative real earnings. Their wages didn't go up fast as inflation, so they have to spend it at the supermarket and not crypto. The Macrovision founder concludes his crypto talk by mentioning how, despite the wild price swings that Amazon's early investors endured, long term, the company has been quite profitable. We've had this really complicated macro situation where we had supply chain shocks, which was people can get factories and ships sorted out because people were still in lockdown with COVID. There was a massive backlog of orders, and this filtered through, and that raised prices because everyone. You know, if, if there's a shortage of goods, if you pay more, you get the goods, right? So that rises, that puts prices up. Then we start to see issues in the commodity sector that have underinvested. So everybody comes online again. Everybody wants oil, gas, everything else. So commodity prices start exploding. Then we add on a Russia-Ukraine war and the penalties on Russia, and that takes a bunch of commodities out of the market. So now we're in this perfect storm of prices rising but people have also scrambling like all of us probably you guys as well to try and hire people so we're all bidding up wages but wages outside of some jobs aren't rising as much as prices so what we've got is the situation where wages have gone up let's say four and a half percent and prices have risen eight and a half percent so everyone's taken a four and a half percent or four percent haircut in their net worth. Now that hit crypto. It started as soon as inflation happened, because if you think of crypto as a groundswell movement, basically the dollar cost averaging by average people who are in the space had started drying up. And we saw all the on-chain activity basically flatten out. And we've been in this sideways sloppy range because we've seen no network growth across the entire ecosystem. Um, within crypto, we'll talk about that later. But so that slowed down there. But we still had that kind of after effects of stimulus, people coming online. So economies were growing, but it now looks like all the forward looking indicators are starting to roll over and start to show recession because you've basically given everybody an income haircut. So discretionary spending is going down the toilet. We're seeing it in things like restaurant spend, we've seen consumer credit going up. So people are desperately trying to borrow money to maintain their expenditure plans. We've seen mortgages go up by the most in history as a percentage. Um, I mean, they've absolutely exploded higher. We've seen two-year interest rates with the largest one-year rate of change in all recorded history. We've seen... So what we've got, if you add all of these things, and we've seen the US dollar going up fast... When you put these things together, what you've got is the fastest tightening of monetary conditions in history. 
And we've seen it. The big tech companies are all starting to lay off staff. They're all like, holy shit. Even Amazon said we're overstaffed. So we've completely turned the economy from, oh, great, we're coming out of recession from the pandemic to, oh, my God, we're going straight back into recession. The market's tightened before the Fed even got around to doing it. The market did its job, and it stopped economic growth dead in its tracks. Europe's already in recession. China looks like it's in recession and is in lockdown again. To complicate the picture, we don't know what that means for supply chains. I mean, does, does this change the anchor protocol? I don't know what the knock-on effects are. Um, you know, as you said, maybe there's more knock-on effects in Avalanche. I don't know. It, it's a very complicated ecosystem, Terra, so I don't really know it inside out. Much like, you know, try and pick apart the the Ethereum ecosystem. It's immensely complicated. I, nobody really knows where the fault lines lie, who's got the leverage, who hasn't. But, you know, markets like this, this is what they do. They find the they find the weakest hands um, and drive drive it into the strongest hands. I mean, that's just always the way of the world. So do you agree with Raul, Paul, that markets are tightening and we're headed into a recession? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.